I love you. All right. Good afternoon, good morning, good whatever it is you're having today. Yep, it's Transformation Tuesday. Let's take a deep breath in to just that word, Transformation Tuesday, which means that we're going through these shifts. Sometimes it just doesn't feel right, uncomfortable. And no matter how many times we go around this, the sun, there's all this shifting going on. So paradigm shifters is a, once again, let me just, you know, paradigm shifters, we are a dedicated community to shift and uplift the entire planet. <laughs> From the little babies to the grandmas, to people who aren't here anymore, to people who are to come. So we are a dedicated community to shift and uplift no matter how we feel. Now, I am so blessed. I just feel so blessed. <clears throat> to um, have Grace on again. And we, we first met Grace back at the beginning of the pandemic, and she shifted and uplifted us. And one reason I wanted to have Grace back, I haven't seen her in a long, long time. Grace is a wise old woman of 22 now, right? Is that right? <laughs> yeah, 21. Oh, I didn't mean to make you older than you are. <laughs> That's okay. Really I'll take it. You'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I, I was just wanted to have you on and, and um, to ask you what the may possibly what the last few years you've learned about yourself. And I know you grew up in these principles, which sometimes it's easy, sometimes it's hard. So I would love to have you take it away and tell us a little bit about where you've been in the last couple of years and where you are now and what kind of shift you're in and just anything you want to unload. <laughs> Upload. Yeah. Upload. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, so since COVID, a lot has changed for the world and my world. And I think the biggest thing that has happened, the most uh, transformational for me was leaving Texas. I, after COVID, um, I was, let's see, I was moving in with my two best friends. Um, we moved into a house in San Marcos and it was this beautiful little three bedroom house that had a beautiful yard and um, our landlord's mother-in-law lived uh, next door to us. And uh, it was, it was a really awesome experience and way to really kind of um, fly out of the nest. And in that, you know, I learned that sometimes you can be best friends with somebody and there's absolutely no way you guys can live together. <laughs> and that's okay, you know? And, uh, you know, I had to learn how to communicate with, uh, with love and compassion whenever, you know, things are frustrating you or concerning you. And uh, that was a really awesome, wonderful, beautiful learning experience in my life. Um, and it was, it was a lot of fun. Um, and I didn't get to finish out that lease. It was a year long lease with them um, uh, because I got a really awesome opportunity to go work with one of my like very first loves in Wyoming at a ski resort. And, you know, I thought that this was divine timing, which it was, but not in the way that I thought it was. Um, I thought that it was divine timing and that, you know, me and this other person's life were, you know, meeting back up. And uh, I was going to marry this guy. And I was just absolutely infatuated with the idea of 
you know, being able to be with him and also be traveling and experiencing something new in my life. So I broke my lease. Well, I actually kind of just gave my lease to my, one of my roommate's boyfriends and he ended up moving in and they actually are expecting a child any day now. Um, and so, you know, as I, as I look at it now, it's all, all divine timing for everybody. Um, and I left in November to go work at the ski resort in Jackson Hole, Wyoming with my boyfriend at the time. And at that point, I didn't think that my car would make it up to Wyoming. So we took my dog and myself. Here's my baby. He's on this call with us. And all of our stuff in one car up to Wyoming. And we both had jobs through the Four Seasons and they provided us with a uh, discounted housing, which was a really rundown motel room that uh, was around $1,100 a month. Um, and so I was really excited about it. Um, I get up there and, uh, you know, the reason that I wanted to, you know, change, change my job was because I have been in the service industry working as a barista or a server for six years. And I wanted to get out of the restaurant industry. I wanted a different experience. I love it. It's great. There's money to be made and, you know, people to connect with, which is what I love, but I wanted to change it up. I didn't, I don't want to be in the, in the restaurant industry or service industry my whole life. There's no way, there's no way. And so I get up there and our first couple days at the four seasons, you know, we're kind of onboarding and my first day at work, they say you're hosting at a restaurant. And I was like, wait, I don't want to work in the restaurant. That's what I, that's what I told you guys when I applied is that I want to be out on the mountain. I want to be in nature. Uh, and they said, well, you know, your boyfriend is working in the only area of the four seasons that put that you can be out on the mountain in, and you guys can't be working in the same, um, the same area of the, of the hotel. I, I guess it's just a, it's a, it's a rule they have about, um, couples. Um, and so for the first couple of weeks, I was just watching him live the life that I was expecting and what I was, I was dreaming about. Um, while I was, I just want to put a pause there and ask this community here, how many of you have watched other people live the life you've dreamed of? That I'm like, whoop, pause. Yeah, there you go. Yep. Uh -huh. Okay. I mean, this, I am just so, I mean, that is th something that's so key about this shifting and uplifting and finding out, wait a minute, what do I love? So, that, I mean, I'm just like listening for those gold nuggets, like what you're learning. So, it's, right. it's not just, I, I love the fact that, that you're, you're young and snapping into those and yeah. having the courage probably to shift it somehow. Maybe yeah. not right away, but yeah, continue with the story. I'm going to just pause it and ask people questions because your story is like ringing true, at least for me, <laughs> about times in my life. So cool beans, Grace, keep going. Yeah. So... I realized this and I was also, I was really homesick. Um, I have a twin sister and I had never been away from her my entire life. And so not only was I homesick, but I was missing her a lot. And I didn't really have anybody 
there to talk to or anything like that. So I was really depressed and I was crying like three, four times a day. And this poor guy that I came up with has only known me to be a happy, bubbly, light spirit. And so about two, two and a half weeks in, he sat me down and he said, listen, you're not the person that I came up here with. And, you know, I, I want to have fun and you're just really bringing me down. And, you know, I just, I need to, I need to do my own thing. And so, and of course, in, in the state, in the, in the state that I was, I was, I was broken. I was so sad. And I said, you know what? This is it. This is the world. This is the universe sending me signs that this was not the right thing to do and that I need to get out of here. And so I, you know, I had two, I think I had two days with myself and I really just thought about everything really hard and about why I was sad, what wasn't working and if there was a way that I could change it and that I could stay. And at this point, my rent is double now because he moved out and we were sharing a place and I hated my job. So I was like, you know, all right, there's nothing I can do. And I called my sister and I said, Hey, I need you to come recon mission me. I don't have a car. Um, I have my dog and, and my life and I don't have a car and I need to leave. <laughs> and she was like, okay, you know, I can be there in like three, three days. And so I went to work the next day after that. And on the bus ride home, I got talking to this guy from California and, you know, he's kind of just like reaching and pulling and like asking me all these different questions. And I end up telling him, you know, kind of what's been happening. And he looked at me and this was like right before we were just about to get off the bus. And he looked at me and he said, well, you know, you're really going to need to change your narrative around that story if you're going to get anywhere. Change your narrative. Oh, and I was like, oh my gosh, you are so right. I've never been a victim of anything. This is all happening for me. This is all happening for me. And so I was like, okay. I really need to change my narrative. And I went home and a ski instructor that I had met a couple of days, maybe, maybe a week before, asked me to go on a walk with him and his, his dog and my dog. And I was like, okay, you know, a walk isn't going to hurt anything. I'm leaving anyway, you know. And I go on a walk with this guy and he asks me, you know, have you ever thought of, of working on the mountain? And I'm like, well, yeah, that's what I came up here to do. And he was like, well, you know, the mountain needs lifties really badly and they will hire you in, in an instant. And so I was like, okay, a lifty. Yeah. What's, what's that? What's that? What, what's that about? And he's like, you just bump chairs and make sure, make sure people are safe getting on and off the lifts. And I was like, okay, yeah, that sounds fun. That sounds like something I could do. Um, and so I get, I, you know, I spend this, I spend, I'll end up spending all day with this guy and uh, it, it's really fun. And he introduces me to some, some new people that, you know, I didn't really have very many friends up there. I was, I felt pretty isolated. And so he introduced me to like this whole new kind of world, like a new job, new friends and a new way of kind of like thinking about things. And he said, you know, if you need to go home and that's what you need to do to, you know, to get yourself in the right mindset, then that's what you need to do. And that's okay. But if you can stay here and work through it, I think that's what you should do. Because diamonds come from, you know, the hardest of pressures. 
Oh, I and, heard that one this last week too, about the coals, the precious yeah. the diamonds. Yeah, so keep going. And then I'm curious about what you're doing now too. Um, but keep going. And then, cause you're now back in Texas. Yeah. So, yeah. Come on so I ended up getting the job on the mountain and I ended up ditching the four seasons. Um, I quit the four seasons after a month or so of doing both of the jobs, um, which was not fair to my dog because I was, you know, at work from 7 a.m. to 11 p.m. Um, and I realized that not only did I hate it, but he hated it too. So it didn't work for either of us. And, you know, if, it, if something doesn't work in your life and you really try and really, you know, make the effort to make it work and it still doesn't work, then, you know, it's time to let it go and release it. And so I let go of the Four Seasons and I ended up having the best time ever as a lifty. Um, I, I met so many cool people. I learned how to snowboard. I learned how to ski better. Um, and I, you know, I, I, that, you remember that, that guy that, um, I walked the dogs with before, right before I was about to leave, I ended up making a really good connection with him. And we hung out pretty much the entire rest of the season. And towards the end of the season, um, we started dating and we ended up finding this, um, this van that was abandoned in the parking lot. And a lot of times when we would be going up, riding the bus up to the, to the village, uh, we would pass it in, in the van. We'd, we'd pass the, in the bus, sorry. We'd pass the van in the parking lot and we'd be like, you know, just kind of joke about like, well, that's been there for three months. Like, what if we like took it and like van lifed it and like created a whole house in it. And sure enough, after, you know, the season ended towards like, as the season was ending, um, we were able to get the van and get the title for it. It was abandoned. I think the person, all of his information was in the glove box. I think he was either um, deported or uh, arrested. And his work van was just abandoned in the Staples car park. And so um, we, spent some time and some money and uh converted it into a livable space for us for about a month and we traveled down from wyoming to texas in this van and we stopped at all of the most beautiful places and it was just it was an amazing experience to first of all to live in survival mode 24 7. There you go. And I wanted I wanted to ask you some questions because you brought up a whole lot of like nuggets in there. Okay. So let's take a deep breath in here because there's something about living an adventurous life, not knowing and letting letting it go. And so where where was it? What are some of the um, principles that you were putting into place? where you were seeing an old pattern and shifted it. Like, what was it from some of the teachings? I know you grew up in all the principles that you kept asking yourself. What questions were you asking yourself around the way? Um, I think that at the beginning, it was a lot of why questions. Why am I feeling this way? Why, you know, mainly why, why am I feeling this way? And getting down to like the root cause of my, you know, discomfort or in, in contentment and, you know, figuring out if that is something that I can change or something that I need to grow through and learn. Ooh, there you go. Is it something you can change? or something that, and you, only you know, 
only you and your spirit knows. Yes. Awesome. Awesome office. Awesome. Yeah. So now that you're back in, in, in Texas and I see you with it, I, you're, you're working with the children and you just sparkle now. There's some sparkling. And you probably know that you'll be going through yet more changes all the time. So tell me, um, if you were going to give give this community, and and there's so many of us who it's like we're going, oh yeah, I remember those days. I, I, you know, I remember those, and it was like that sense of freedom, that sense of I can choose, I can change. What would you give um, suggest for those? For those of us who are in a confusion state, to to ask, what kind of questions would you suggest we ask ourselves to, like, not necessarily pull out of it, or maybe the uncomfortableness is there for a reason, but yeah. you know what I mean? What kind of questions would you suggest? I think it's really important um, to ask yourself, is this really what's happening or is this how I feel about what's happening? Gold nugget. Say that because one more time. Say that again. <laughs> if you, so asking yourself, is this really what's happening or is this more of how I feel about what's happening? And that is the beginning to changing your narrative around what's happening and if you have a victim narrative you know why is this happening to me you know everything sucks like i was left i was deserted you know uh, i am heartbroken that can really create what's going to happen in the future and if you change the narrative to a more positive outlook and you don't necessarily have to know why things are happening, you just have to know why you are feeling the way you're feeling. The whys are like the most important questions I think that we can ask and also the most important things that we'll never know and that we just need to accept that we'll never know that you know like like all of the things that are happening to me are happening for me and my greatest good and when I think of the things that are happening to me and I ask myself why are these happening to me I never really get anywhere. And it's because I'm not supposed to know. And so if you put your energy into somewhere else and and not into something that you're you're never going to really get an, an answer to, then you expend your energy in a much more helpful way in a much more efficient and, and I mean, you're not wasting energy <laughs> and, and life force and energy is important, especially when you're going through transformation and change, because a lot of your energy subconsciously is, is going towards, you know, that, that shift and that change. And also, I mean, like, just kind of, asking yourself what you want in the future and what you want to arise. And, and I mean, if you have, if you're giving space and you're giving energy, if you're giving space in your life for something new to come up, then ultimately you are creating that. So every single question you think should be mindful and intentional. I think that living your life with intention is the most important part. If every action has an intention, then, you know, 
you are living your life intentionally and, and you will be living with the flow and not against the flow. Wow. <laughs> now I would love, that's it. That's it. I love the fact that you're, you're working with the young children and in their way, you can teach them as well. No matter, I mean, that is, that to me is so, so beautiful. The general, generational awareness. Yes, so perfect. You know what I would love to ask you to do now, Grace? Yes. The last time you came on, you totally blew me out of the water as well as everyone when you led us in a meditation. And I don't know if you remember it, but it doesn't really matter. But I know that that's one of the things that you are, is one of your gifts. So would you take us into a meditation? Look at you. Of course. <laughs> Go ahead. So thank you. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Everybody, close your outer eyes and open your inner eyes. Take a deep breath in and out. Take another deep breath in and release everything that is no longer serving you. As you focus on each breath, notice how when you breathe in, it's cooler. When you breathe out, and it's warmer. This breath is like the energy in our life flowing from one person to the next, from one thing to the next thing. The energy that you take in should always come out with more love than it arrived. As you continue to breathe, think about all of the people in your life that come through and think about how you affect them. Are you raising their vibrations up? Are you touching them with love and energy? If you put yourself into a room of people that are feeling down, would your existence in that room uplift everybody else? Feel the vibrations in your body. Feel the energy and the love that you have coursing through your veins every day. Now extend that love and that energy to your neighbors. to their neighbors, to your family across the world. We have the power every single day, 
every single moment to raise the vibrations, our own vibrations and everybody else's vibrations. As paradigm shifters, we must raise the vibrations every day. Take a deep breath in and out. As you come back to the space, keep your energy vibrating at the same level and try to hold that vibration throughout the entire day. And come back to the space. Open your eyes and wiggle your toes. Namaste. <clears throat> Whoa, so grateful for you, Grace, and your light in the world. So with that, our community is putting light around you. Yeah, there you go. We're going to put it and sending it no matter where you are, where you are right now, or when, who's ever listening to this. We're sending this to Grace. May she continue to hold her light and her, her wisdom <laughs> and her joy her sparkling joy, because Grace sparkles with joy. Thank you so much, Grace. We so love and appreciate you. Thank you, Judy. Amen.